Vicki Langford with Project 3810. We are a business incubator here in West OKC, and our mission is to help people become better bosses. Project Boss is our special op to accomplish our mission. Bosses have to manage the business from sales to operations to finances. Bosses need to develop their leadership styles and effectiveness in order to achieve results. And our boss members participate in peer coaching through boss board meetups and boss board roundtable. We expose our bosses to subject matter experts and introduce them to key players to help them achieve their business goals. Hello, bosses. Vicki here with Project 3810. We have just finished up a boss board high noon. I've got my subject matter expert on our topic today of advertising here in the podcast studio. Today's expert is Kyle Golding of The Golding Group. Hey, Hi, Kyle. Hey, Vicki. How's it going? It's going great. I'm super great happy job to be today. here. Thank you. It was a great crowd. Great Q&A presentation was, was flowing. People were asking questions. It was great. If you missed it, too bad. We're going to cover some of it on this podcast today, That's but right. you guys really missed out. I'm Kyle Golding. I'm the CEO and Chief Strategic Idealist for The Golden Group. We are a strategic planning, business process management, and marketing integration firm. Our office is here at Project 3810. We're super happy to be part of this community. Awesome. And Kyle is on the advisory council here. So our incubator tenants get access to our advisory council. So it's great to be in the studio with you again. Kyle has um, gotten me into this whole podcasting thing over the years that we've been neighbors here and finally, finally made it happen. And so I appreciate your continuing uh, encouragement. <laughs> and it's always weird for me to be on this side of the podcast equation instead of being the interviewer, being interviewed. I've done a couple with you, uh, this podcast with some other guests, but it's the first time we've done one-on-one like this where you're interviewing me instead of me interviewing you. That's true. It is true. And I'm going to I'm going to keep you on on topic here, (laughs) Kyle. There you go. I need that. I need that in my life. Today's topic is advertising. And and I know you will love to talk about everything and how it relates to the marketing scheme of things. And marketing is first. We're going to assume that you're going to read the blog post and listen to the podcast that we already have. And we'll put some links to those in our show notes. Yeah, for sure. But today we want to specifically focus on the advertising piece, what we do in our business and how advertising helps us. Go. Go, Kyle. Let's start let's how start does right. Advertising help us. Right. Well, we'll start <laughs> Why right, do I need to advertise? Start right off the top <laughs> with with the definition and I'm not talking about the American Marketing Association's uh, definition or the Ad Club's definition. My definition yes. for this for this conversation and for the presentation we just did because I think it's important to make some certain distinctions. Advertising is paid placement of your message. It can be traditional, like print, in a newspaper or a magazine or some other sort of publication. It can be a billboard, but it could also be on a website. It could be inside someone else's email. It could even be paid placement of a social media post, anything where you pay to boost that post or to put it in front of a specific audience, et cetera. The, the reason that that's important is it's a specific message, and it could be brand message, or it could be sales oriented. It could be call to action, or it could just simply be that you exist yeah. and what you do. But you have control over that process when you pay for the placement, as opposed to organic social media or public relations or other types of communications. So I think it's uh, it's essential for everyone to understand that when you pay for the placement, you're in control of the process as far as you're willing to pay. Yes. And then there's got to be an ROI. Right. Right. And so that's the equation and the balance and how do you get started and where does it go from there? Right. Which is all the things we'll talk about today. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. So I'm a business owner and I've got my branding on track. I know who I am. I know what I'm what I'm offering. I know my customers. I'm ready to advertise. Should I go to an advertising agency? <laughs> she set me up with a softball <laughs> right off the top of the softball because I'll say this, I'll be very distinctive and probably maybe controversial. Let's do it. I'm going to break some hearts here, but no, don't go to an ad agency. Yeah, why not? I'm not a fan of the ad agency model of, of selling you creative and buying your media. They double dip on the media buys. It's a whole thing. But um, it's not constructive to talk about why to not go to ad agency agencies here. I do want to talk about the fact that there are so many tools and so much information for business owners now to manage their own advertising. And then it, it, it keeps them engaged in the process and it reconnects them back to all the marketing efforts that, that, right. that we already talked about. The way you advertise and how it works and how it doesn't work and all of the feedback that comes from running ad campaigns 
is beneficial to the business owner or or at least the management team, the leadership, the decision makers to know and understand and be involved in. Yes. And when you third party, and I'm a third party provider, you know, I, I right. provide third party services, so I'm not saying don't work with third parties, but be stay super engaged. Yes. And understand the why. And we'll talk about today more of the why of the conversation than the actual execution. Yeah. But you do need to look to your outside experts, whether it's an ad agency or a consultant or a business coach or uh, or just other business owners who've had success right. in, in similar areas that, that you have about some places to start. You know, yes. Some general, like how to dip your toe in. Yeah. Because once you start, you can learn what works and what doesn't. You can make those adjustments and you can do better moving forward. But- I think probably the biggest question everyone asks is, right, where do I start? Right. Where, there's so many options for advertising, and I have to pay for all of them. Yes. So if I'm spending my money, where do I start? And I I think that t- the, the type of business you're in is really important. So if I'm a brick-and-mortar retailer, right. I want to do a, use a different – I want to use, you know, Google My Business. I want to use tools like that that are going to be local. Ge- geographically connected – and, yes. And something that makes more sense about how people search for you, how people find you, how you yes. get that message you paid for and in front of them, as opposed to something that's more generic or yeah. um, accidentally hitting their feed, if you will. Right. So, yeah, business to business type of, uh-huh. of advertising is going to be a different thing. And much more specific. And e-commerce store yes. is going to need a different type of thing. So really, and that's where I think what you're getting at about advertising agencies is, is as a business owner, it's very easy to just sink money into a promise of a result right. without actually um, taking it a little bit like baby steps. Let's experiment. Let me yes. see what this one thing does. And then making sure that you're getting a targeted uh, a, um, a service provider, advertising agency or, or other that specializes in the type of, of lane you're in, that specializes in retail, that specializes in e-commerce, that specializes in B2B um, and things like that. And your messaging needs to make sure that they align with your messaging that you've already established in your marketing plan. It seems like Today, 2022, you would say, God, there's thousands of options. Like, where do I start? Like, I don't know where to start. The But the beauty of that is that you can experiment. You, you hit the right word exactly. You can experiment for smaller and smaller amounts of money. You know, it used to be back in the day, back mm-hmm. in the 80s and oh, 90s yes. and early 2000s, right? You know, uh, if, if you wanted to run a newspaper ad or if you wanted to run something in an industry-specific publication, uh, it cost a lot of money. Yes. And sometimes they would even lock in the contracts. You have to do multiple buys and you have to do so many months and so many, you know, buy the whole year at the same time to run your half page, quarter page, full page ad and whatever publication makes sense for your product or service. And you committed to all that before you ever got a single ounce of feedback. (laughs) <laughs> you're on the line for <laughs> right. thousands and thousands, and sometimes we're doing hundreds it of thousands. A lot of times of because the big guys are doing it. Yes. And and you keeping up with the Joneses. It's really hard to go head to head. Right. <laughs> but today you can run Facebook ads for fifty dollars. Yes. You can do a Twitter and promoted get really post good or results Instagram in a promoted short post. Of time. Yes. Yeah. Um you can you can uh retarget your online ads and you can promote your website. There's all kinds of things that you can do that are small buys. But if you are paying attention, this goes back to you versus an agency, right? But if you're paying attention to the small buy and the messaging, you have a singular message, right? For advertising to be effective, it has to be extremely focused. You have to have a single message. And that message needs to be based on your value proposition, your position in the industry. That that argument you can make where we win this argument every time. Right. Like when we go up against our competitors, we want to lead with our strength, our number one best strength that we win the most with. And that's that focus. You don't want to add that says six things. You want to add that says one thing. Right. Whether it's print or digital or any other type of, of format, no matter how it, the ad gets in front of someone, it needs to be very focused, very specific. And then, you know, the traditional idea has to have a call to action, right? Well, yes and no. So um, those calls to action are becoming a little bit more less in vogue these days uh, because consumers are a lot more sophisticated. They mistrust blatant advertising, you know, the used car sales of the world. They really dislike these days. So a little bit more informational, yeah, a little bit more driven, emotion driven, a little bit more option 
to, Transparency. to, to learn more or, or yeah. put yourself in the beginning of a sales funnel as opposed to going straight for the close. Yeah. You know, the old days of, you know, buy now, fourteen ninety five, dollars right, mm-hmm. click here, right? right? All of those things. That That is very ineffective And these consumers days. will do their own research too. That, yes. they'll, the, that ad will show up in their feed and then they're going to, they're going to maybe click on it and then they're going to go do a Google search and right. like see what other things. So it, it's a ongoing. I think number one is you need to start. You need, experimentation yeah. is the, is the word yeah. we've thrown around, but you need to start and experiment. Understand it's not going to work great coming out of the box, but um, you've already done the marketing work. So you have yes. a pretty good idea what that singular message is and who you should be in front of. And, and to just give it an example, like today in the, in the, in our, in our high noon, we have an insurance guy that's a, a client here and he says, I can't compete with Geico 15 minutes because our process is longer. We do more, we need be, we do more analysis and stuff. And so that was like, well, n- you know, your value proposition is not going to be tracking customers that need a quote right away. Right. So that's kind of messaging example. Is the focus on his strength, which is more on the customer service and on the relationship based side. And people who are looking for convenience will actually be turned off by his advertising. And that's okay. Exactly. It's a good thing. Advertising does two things, right? It attracts the right audience for the right reasons, but it also essentially pushes away uh, the wrong audiences for the wrong reasons because no one wants to waste any time or money, you know, emailing, phone calling, even showing up in your physical location and going, I'm looking for this. And like, that's not what we do. Exactly. You know, if you're looking for the Geico example, 15 minutes, you want to do it online, convenient, never talk to a human being, all that good stuff. Fine. Call Geico. Exactly. If if you want to be able to sit across a desk from a real human being in this case, yeah, and Talk ask to questions. Jamie at e- insurance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and so the advertising should reflect that. Right. Um, people too often are very nervous about being so specific about here's who we service and no one else. Right. They're so afraid that that pushes people away, but it should push people away because you're attracting. People who weren't going to do business with you anyways because they're not looking for what it is you have to offer. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses. Right. Every, every yeah. human, every organization, right. every, every business. So, you know, avoid your weaknesses and lead with your strengths. It's pretty simple yeah. like that. But too many people get um, too excited about everyone loving them and everyone knowing what their product is and their service and kumbaya and all we, that we good stuff. We can't please everybody. You can't. No one ever has. No one ever <laughs> will. Why waste your time and money doing that? But going back to the idea of experimentation, uh, you won't know until you get started. Yeah. You got to do the first round. You got to experiment. Do your A-B testing. Don't run one ad. Running one ad doesn't tell you anything. Yeah. You have to run A-B. And to be honest with you these days, when I tell clients it's an A-B test, what I really mean is more like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There you I'm, go. I'm yeah. really running probably typically, especially when it comes to uh, something like Facebook ads or Twitter or Instagram, I'm running two campaigns and then two to three variations per campaign. The difference between using video and photo, the difference in the headline, et cetera. But ultimately, most of that's going to fail. And it sounds silly to say you run some advertising that will fail, but what you're trying to do is eliminate the things that aren't going to work as much so that you can focus eventually on the advertising, whether it's the platform, the the message, the presentation, the, the, the consistency, et cetera, that actually leads to potential conversion. And that's the whole point of the game. Right. And I learned today that advertising is really a bucket of communication. One of the, the, the tools in the communication bucket that a company should use once to spread the word about what they do and what they offer. And it's the paid option, like you said. So what are the other things in that communication? So paid, paid place, paid placement. Doesn't matter how you create the advertising, but you pay for how it shows up, who gets to see it, frequency, size, importance, all that good stuff. So that's, that's advertising. Typically called advertising. The way, the way I see it, the way we're having a conversation. So then you have all the things that you don't really pay for the placement, although you might pay for production or other aspects of it. That's your social media feeds, your email marketing, video marketing, event sponsorships, all kinds of things where you've put your message or your logo or some information about your company in places not necessarily hoping people will find it, but understanding that everyone will. Uh, if you put it on Twitter, it depends on how many Twitter followers you have. Same thing with Facebook, Instagram, et cetera. So people can share it, and there's some way that that message can, can expand itself. But, you know, if you have 10 followers on Twitter, uh, p- putting a post on Twitter is going to eventually get into potentially, and probably not even all, 10 people that follow you. Now you have 
2,000 followers or 20,000 followers on your Twitter page, you have much more likely that it gets in front of them, but you still don't have control over guaranteeing it gets in front of someone and the size and the format. You just have to follow the rules of, of Twitter or, or right. Instagram, et cetera. Same thing with sponsorship of events, uh, community events, or, or something like that. Your name is on the sign, your, you know, your logo is right. presented. They might say your name from the stage or all that kind of stuff. And you paid to be there, but you still didn't get to say, you have to do this at this time, and I have to be on top of the thing, and I can't be listed with someone else. And if, if the, my competitors are advertising, I'm out. You have no control over that in communication, often called external communication. Sort of the umbrella is mass communication. I break it down internal and external communication. Obviously, internal is talking to your people. Letting Making them sure in. your people know the story. They got to know what's up what, because someone's going to call or email. What they should say and not say. Right. And but external communication are all of these things that doesn't fall under advertising or public relations. Now, public relations is what's called earned media, and you earn it by pitching a story or participating in something that is newsworthy and for the community good. So in the case of the old school publication, right, you pitch, pitch to a newspaper or yeah. a TV or radio news program where they're journalists, if you pitch them a sales pitch, they throw it in the trash. They don't want to hear about how cool your product is. It's on sale. You should come on down. We'll treat you like family, all that good salesy conversation. That's not anything anyone's interested in in a PR pitch. But if you've created a new type of technology or if you're doing something that's really innovating in industry, if you're meeting a community need, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're selling something that's just a commodity, beer, hamburgers, anything of that nature, you're never going to meet a community need because right. hamburgers are great. But they, but but if you cure cancer, <laughs> you know, right. even if it's a product that you're selling that cures something or, or has an effect. Or you're the hamburger stand that's hosting a fundraiser for the that, people right. that are raising money Exactly. For if you're doing something in the community, the focus of a story that you would pitch to in a PR case of that where my hamburger stand is, is the leading presenter or sponsor for the local uh, little league team. Right. The story is the little league team. Absolutely. It's not you. You hope that maybe your name gets mentioned in the in the story. And you earned you some goodwill. It, you, exactly. You earned it. And people do, goodwill is a great word because people, when they read things from third parties that are, are not trying to sell you anything, they're just trying to give you some information, journalists and the like, that are, are that's their job is to be selective in what they present to the community. And it's a community focus. It's not sales focused. Then the trust factor goes way up, the person reading it. And then they get to an article and it says, you know, sponsored by Bob's Hamburger Stand. They go, oh, there's some good people over there. I should go right. spend my money at Bob's. Again, you don't have control as to whether the journalist puts that into the article and whether people read it that way or people show up. And the worst part is no one ever, I don't say no one, but on average, people don't show up to Bob's Burger Stand and go, hey, I saw the article in the paper or on the local news. Right. And the fact that you sponsored those kids' t-ball team, I'm here today to spend 12 bucks on a couple of burgers. They don't tell you that. Yeah. They just come through the line and they buy their burgers and they go home and you never know. Right. So it's a little bit of a passive approach, but the, the trust factor for the public goes higher. But ultimately what you have is your paid placement advertising. You have mm -hmm. your earned media public relations. You have your other communications that you don't have control over how they reach the audience. But you have... All that together is your media mix. Your mix are all of this, sort of the all of the above approach to everything. Yeah. And this is where- Is uh, there one, like I'm just starting, I'm, I'm just gaining some, is there one area of that I should focus on first in the very beginning? The focus is less on what one thing, but how you can do all of it. And that sounds like, it sounds like I, I backtracked from your question there, but I'll explain. So you can't rely on one thing. Because okay. one thing won't always work. And people receive information and process information and they, and they find value in information in different ways. There's no like everyone sees a, a press release and goes, oh, I'm all in. Right. No, th that happens to some people. Some people ignore it. Some people don't care. Some people see advertising and they're like, I don't want to hear about ads. I don't, don't sell me anything. I don't want to hear it. Some people are like, oh, that's interesting. I'd like to know more. And they'll click, you know, the, the, the learn more button or whatever it is. Uh, some people will see an organic tweet and be like, and think to them, themselves like oh they're just talking about their business i like to support local business maybe i should do business with them right everyone has a different motivation a different inspiration and a different reason to investigate more you know you have caught their attention yeah now you have to attract them and it's different for multitudes of people so depending on one avenue 
like, ah, I'm going to go with paid placement because I can control the process. That's great, but there are still people who ignore paid placement. And it costs money, right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And then the flip side, you know, earned media, it's, it's earned. There's no guarantee your stories get run. When they get run, you have no control over it. They may not even mention you at all. Maybe you're pitching, you, you get cut out of it, and you have no control over it. So a lot of effort, not as much economic factor behind it, but effort costs money ultimately right. at the end of the day, that you might put into something that might pay off or might not. And that passive approach is a little, um, people get a little, a little iffy about that as well. Yeah. Same thing with your organic reach on your social media and your email marketing and things. So each one has positives and negatives. Each one has a th- reason why you would do it not. And so a mix of all of them are at least tempting to t- to do right. all of them because you can't always do all of them. Because I'm hearing the, the, you know, the new entrepreneur that's starting his business saying, I hate Facebook and I don't use Facebook. Do I have to use Facebook in my business as one of my communication platforms? You do if that's where your customer is. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter do I have what to do all you of the like. social media platforms. Flip of that, though, is, you know, I'm on the committee that judges the Love's business playing competition every year. And these college kids every year, not just 2022, but for the last five years that I've been involved, they're going to launch a multi-million dollar business on Twitter. <laughs> like... No, that's not realistic. That's not the real world. You need more than whatever following you could create on Twitter to launch a business that has a, a ton right. of investment behind it and all kinds of, of other efforts. You can, yeah. you know, if you want to start a side hustle, you can do it on Twitter because you, you have other ways of supporting it. You can't launch a business with investor funds and only use social media. You need paid placement. You need some PR at the same time. And so the mix, the media mix, the different ways to hit people with different messages for different reasons. And and then figuring out which one activates them the most. Yeah. And yeah, because I was getting ready to say I'm hearing uh, I'm hearing experimentation again. <laughs> it goes back. <laughs> it starts. Everything mix. starts there, but yeah. ultimately but experimentation like finding, has to pay off, right? Yeah. Experimentation will either that fail but or figuring out which media mix is right for you. More of this, less of that. Yes. Use this platform the most because my type of customer is on Twitter more right. than Instagram right. or something and like that. And it also that. depends. Yeah, it's something we talked about on. on my podcast one time, Pritch and I were talking, I was like giving the same example. And I was like, you know, if I'm, if I'm selling beer, well, 21 and up automatic. Right. right? But if I'm selling clothing based on a, a, a style of music that the, the teenagers are really into. So music, clothing, and teenagers, that automatically elicits TikTok. Right. So there are certain things that are all going to dra- drive you to different platforms, different channels, things like that, again, depending on your audience and who you are and all that good yeah. stuff. But to give people, instead of saying it depends on your business, for this podcast, what's key is to not be singular in any approach and then not be settled in it at any time. 80-20 rule, right? You always should be experimenting. 80% of what works, 20% should be experimentation. So... Um, Trying a little bit of everything, finding what works because of the feedback from the audience, then that's your 80%. You ride that you ride that horse as long as you can, that, yeah. as long as it continues to, to be profitable, yes. you know, continue to, to provide beneficial ROI and do that as much as you can. Learn as much as you can, get as much feedback from your audience, experiment with all the other things too. And you never know when an experiment jumps up and becomes something more effective than you ever thought it was going to. And it comes into the 80%. It goes out of the 20% and gets into the 80%, probably replaces maybe a more traditional type of approach or something like that. Then your competitors will change, your market will change, the audience will change, and then you'll have to do it all over again. So there's always some experimentation. That's why the 80-20 rule is important important to always be kind of dipping your toes in other things and paying attention. Do what makes sense. Do what is, has a ton of logic behind it, what has returned positive ROI, but always be thinking of what what's the next big thing. Yeah. So last month we talked about sales and, and while you were talking, it made me think about, do you consider that initial cold contacting that a sales guide does a form of external communication? It definitely is communication. If it's cold, cold, 
literally you've never heard of us, then it, it's just a sales process because marketing hasn't been involved and, and advertising hasn't affected them at all. Hopefully- Marketing should have been involved because he's going to be telling, his script should have something to do with your brand messaging. Yes, and, and but yeah. it hasn't, hasn't presented the opportunity. It, hopefully, um, even a very cold call with, hey, this is so-and-so from, from the Acme company, right? Have, right. You he- have you heard of us? Oh, yeah. You know, I've seen your ads. I've seen your Facebook posts. They showed right, up on right. Twitter one time. A friend told me about you. Yeah. There's all kinds of aspects like that to hopefully connect. And a good salesperson will try to find those connections. Yes. Um, but and they're, they're usually getting a call list that's been curated based on your demographic information. Ho- hopefully. <laughs> but I, yeah. to me, it's, it, it kind of, I'm kind of drawing that connection of a paid ad, right? Yeah. Which is going to kind of blanket a lot of people that haven't heard from you and with a call to action. You, you have so, control over like your sales team and like this, the calls they make coming from a list and curated and things like that and the pitch they'll make. You have control over that. You have zero control over the receiver, much right. like all advertising. Exactly. Like the person seeing it, you never know who they are right. and how they received it and if they get it or not. Yeah. Um, and, it, and that type of, of top of funnel effort isn't going to be right for every business, but right. a business to business type of business would probably More benefit often than not. Yeah. from being able to call those leads that are your exact right customer model. In a perfect world, you know, every cold call becomes sort of warm because you say I'm from the so and so company yeah. and they oh I'm I'm some way familiar with you some right. sort of advertising some sort of marketing effort has has reached my brain at some point and so then it's on the onus is on the salesperson to kind of connect back to well you know in our ads we talk about you know we talk about customer service or price or availability whatever your your position is yes. and then do that that conversation you're like oh you know you're right I, I I do know that about you I've heard that about you and it goes from there and it just depends on right who you are what you're doing and who your customer is the actual sales process itself but the information that the salesperson learns if they make 100 calls and 100 people say I've never heard of you right but you're advertising Obviously, you're not advertising in a great way because you've missed a yeah. hundred targets that are on your curated list that should be targets. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, your salespeople like dug down. Like, really? What? Why not? Yeah. Like, maybe what do you Make, pay attention to? Yeah. Like, yeah. What TV do you see? What radio? You know, kind yeah. of ask some questions. But those what feedback. What social media platform you yeah. want? If they, I've heard of you. Please dig down and find out why, how they heard of you. Right. If I haven't heard of you, what are you paying attention to? Or are you hearing from our competitors? And where are you seeing them? That feedback through your sales team back to your marketing team can adjust the advertising tactics when you go forward again the next time. Yeah. So they all should interrelate. All right. So just everything is connected. It's always connected. Yes. Let's recap. So advertising actually falls into the bucket of communication. Yes. Communication has advertising, which is paid and you have more control over. Yes. And then you have PR you, and then you have your earned media. Your earned media. It's not paid for. Sometimes people will ask you to pay for your PR, to ask to pay for placement of stories and publications. It's a That's little really bit of a, advertising. It's, it's <laughs> sketchy. It really is advertising, although it happens a lot. I don't want to say it's. I definitely well, don't want to go. It's the age of blogging, right? I definitely it's don't like, want to go as far as unethical, but right. the, it's it can get gray areas, and some people will kind of list like paid sponsorships, and some people will. Right. Just act like we accidentally wrote like an article that. about you the same exactly. month that you ran a full page ad. And the consumers sometimes get it and sometimes don't. So it's a little sketchy. But when it comes to just defining it, putting a definition on it, yes, you have paid media, you have earned media, and then you have organic media. Although it might have cost to you, you have less control over and that's the placement communi- and process. That's the external communication, which social media, yes. blogging, things like that. Exactly. Your website. Your website is, is part of that. It's external well. communication. It is external communication. It has multitudes of I, roles. That's, that's to play. an aha moment. I think that's tweetable. I think sometimes we forget that that website exists to tell people about our products. And, and too many people say, hey, we have a new website, and they think the website goes and does something for them. The website stays there. It's static as, a, as far as the website doesn't reach out to someone. You're advertising can reach out to someone and your organic reads through social media and other places can drive people to your website. But simply having a website by in itself isn't enough. You need more effort yeah. to drive people. There's a ton of information well, it's there. It's a landing spot, right? It's yeah. your it's your virtual storefront that people, right. when they're searching or they find something, they're going to do research and they want to land in a storefront yes. and research a little bit. If you don't bit. have a website, you failed. 
Right. But if you only have a website, you have failed. Yeah. It, it's a part of that mix that we talked about Media earlier. Mix. All yeah, the tools because everyone's going to connect for different reasons, for different ways. Also, speaking to websites, you can't have like sort of the the landing page and the homepage and the about us and then stop. You need to have the the same information conveyed multiple times and found through multiple ways. I found it from the homepage. I found it from the menu. I found it from a deep link from social media. I found it from your email marketing. Yeah. All of those things because people find the information, process information, and either give it a thumbs up or thumbs down in different ways. Right. So give everyone the options. It may seem redundant to you, but it's not to your audience because they're never seeing the other options, only the ones they latch onto. Gotcha. All right, man. Great conversation. Our subject matter expert, (laughs) Kyle Golding. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much, Vicki. It's weird to be on this side of the microphone, but it was a good conversation. Awesome. Thank you.